Stop by to interact with the community and I every Friday night at 8 o'clock for live stream Fridays. Welcome trolls. <laughs>Swords here from Montreal, Quebec. Thanks again for the ongoing support. You guys are amazing. We're looking at this. I caught this. It was the Galilean. They were the Galilean moons. This is Jupiter. And I was looking up a little bit about, you know, the atmosphere around some of these objects, which is pretty interesting. You're looking at the biggest moon in the entire solar system, by the way. Um, they all have apparently an extremely thin atmosphere. And that's what I was studying this afternoon. They say most of these are comprised of some mixture of oxygen, methane, nitrogen, carbon monoxide, and just to give you guys an idea, so that's what you're looking at. The effect of the oxygen, the methane, the nitrogen, and carbon monoxide with the disturbances or whatever is between us and there, <laughs> that's what it looks like. So there will be other attempts of Jupiter many nights, of course, and this was in the clouds and haze, guys, because the clearer the shot you're gonna get of the live footage, the more you will get a chance to easily zoom into it, that's for sure, and we'll be doing more in the coming days. So, although appearing as a single star to the naked eye, Rigel is part of a multiple star system, where the name Rigel strictly refers to only the brightest component, although it is commonly applied to the whole system. It has a supergiant companion. Yep. 400 times fainter. The companion is itself a close triple star system. Oh, so when someone talks about Rigel star, it's <laughs> it's actually a very big star system that they're talking about. And eventually Rigel will turn into a black hole. You need a lot of energy to create a black hole. And I mean a lot of energy about three times the mass of the Sun it has to be uh, the mass that's left so to form a black hole the mass left at the core after the explosion must be more than three times the mass of the Sun for most of its life the star probably needs to be between 50 to 100 times the mass of the Sun to eventually form the black hole so black hole prospects would be very, very large and or bright stars. So Rigel will eventually become a black hole, but maybe only in a few millions of years. But we could see the system around Rigel star and all the triple binary systems and star systems because they're all in these black hole like objects that are all around Rigel. So we like getting in troll close, and that's exactly what we're going to do, and I mean really close. The closer I get, as the closer I can. I mean, that's the goal. Get in as close as we can, keeping clarity. And when we get in and it's blurry, well, we try to profit from what we can see in that blurriness. It's, you know, that's how it is. So I get some music up, and i got to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to come to this channel. Channels based on um, the community and it's based on the quality of the footage. And I think here's an accumulation of both um, good quality footage and some very smart, intelligent researchers that are helping me, by the way, because I appreciate the help, the suggestions from everyone. And I also promise to speak more of the scale and size of the objects when I'm finding smaller objects, as many ask me. So thanks a lot for the help and suggestions, everyone. And of course, the ongoing support. Okay, well, before I get some music up, let's look at this. Bumps on the surface side by side. And over here. Ah, this is beautiful. I don't know what the heck it is, but it's one heck of a beautiful setup i guess anomaly area there's many areas right and they really do look constructed it could be even reservoirs when you think of the massive tanks it could be conserving fuel anything anything is possible the moon and the stars 
are pretty exceptional. When I lost my dad, I related the stars and the moon as being the place where he was. Because being a young boy, I didn't know where heaven was. But I remember my grandfather. I was very young. Lost my dad and my grandfather in the same month. And my grandfather told me to look up on the star when he died that he'd be there looking over me. I think my father told me that that's where my grandfather was just before my dad died. Maybe my dad knew I'd be watching the stars today. For whatever the reason, I have a connection to the moon and the stars like many others do for many different reasons. I'm pretty sure I'll continue to do it throughout my life until I go myself. I don't know. Maybe the reason why people here on Earth, why we can't connect, maybe we have our own path, each our own path that we have to do and understand on our own. And instead of trying to change others, to try to learn from them and understand them.
what is happening right now on earth has happened a thousand years ago. It's a cycle. The earth is cleansing itself once again. Some of us will die. Some of us won't. Life will always continue. And every time life starts again, the secrets are buried where we came from. And they watch us again. It's a cycle. It repeats itself. That's why when every civilization that begins over and over again and gets evolved and evolves, at one point we find ancient technology or buried ancient cultures, entire cultures, as the cycle keeps on going. 